look what I have. It's USB 3.1 Type-C. That's 10 gigabit USB 3. Let's take a look. Okay, let's unbox this. This is the MSI Z97A Gaming 6. This is an LGA 1150 motherboard supporting the fifth generation Intel Core CPU. It's got four DDR3 slots supporting up to DDR3 3300. Uh, the PCB has a nice matte black finish and it feels quite sturdy. In the box, you get the manual, a driver CD, a cool quick installation guide with links to how-to videos. That's also featured in the manual, which is a nice touch. Some stickers to label your cables, a case badge, the back I.O. plate, a door hanger, two SATA cables, and a two-slot SLI bridge. Shameless plug, see our how to build a PC video because we did it pretty well. There are three USB ports combined with the four in the front to give you a total of seven USB 3 ports, but your case will have to have four USB 3 ports for you to take full advantage, or you'll have to order a USB 3 bre breakout header. The motherboard also has four onboard USB 2 ports. If you want to make use of those, you'll need to get headers, or if you have a peripheral or an accessory like the NZXT H61 water cooler, um, those types of accessories can plug directly into those kinds of headers. Also included are these breakout headers, which let you hook up your front panel ports uh, individually. So you take the individual wires and plug them into these things, and then you plug these things into the motherboard. It works out pretty well. At the bottom edge of this board is a front panel audio connector, audio power input header, an RS-232 serial header, a TPM header, a diagnostic LED readout, front panel headers, and then two USB 2.0 headers. In the corner is a four pin fan header. At the front edge of the board, we have one SATA Express connector or six SATA 6 connectors, another four pin fan header, and two front USB 3 headers. Nice. Here's an ATX power connector, and then there's some solder points for diagnostic voltage pins or diagnostic voltage readout if you actually want to solder that. At the top of the board, you'll find the J Turbo 1 header, two four pin headers for the CPU fan and auxiliary CPU fan, and then an eight pin ATX. 12 volt power input. At the back we have a PS2 keyboard port optimized for gaming of course and two 5 volt stable USB ports and then VGA, DVI, and HDMI video output. It also has an optical SPDIF port, the killer E2200 NIC, and six gold plated audio ports. The big deal here is the USB 3.1 Type-C port right there. It's the same as the new iPhone and, and a lot of new USB gadgets are using and it's the same as the USB ports on the new MacBook. We're starting to see a lot of peripherals come with this type of USB port and USB 3.1 in this configuration can hit 10 gigabits of bandwidth, which is exciting to see on this motherboard. The onboard audio implements an eight channel Creative Sound Blaster Cinema 2 and has an optical SPDIF out, as I mentioned before. The motherboard does separate the audio componentry to minimize noise and it provides a nice thick EMI shield around the onboard audio chip. It also has a direct power input so that you can supply external power to the onboard sound card via a Molex connector if you so desire. And it does come with the adapter for that. Let's talk about the graphics card support on this motherboard. It's got three physical by 16 slots, but what are your options there? Well, if you're just gonna run a single graphics card, that will of course be at by 16. If you're gonna run two graphics cards, that's gonna be at by eight and by eight. If you're gonna run three graphics cards, that'll give you by eight, by four, by four, but the only uh, vendor that supports this type of configuration would be uh, AMD. So you can run an AMD setup with by eight, by four, by four, or you can run an NVIDIA setup uh, at by eight by eight or an AMD setup by eight by eight if you want. And that's why this motherboard only comes with the uh, SLI bridge for two graphics cards because modern AMD graphics cards don't need the, the bridge anymore. So uh -huh, look at that. This motherboard also has four by one PCIe slots and it also has an M.2 slot. The top by 16 slot placement means that you've got extra clearance for the CPU cooler with respect to the graphics card, which is a nice touch. Also at the top here, you've also got your fifth four pin fan header. Overall, I really like this motherboard so far and I really can't wait to do a build with it. It seems like it delivers a pretty solid value. I'm not sure why it has a VGA port. That seems kind of weird to still see VGA in 2015, but hey, if you want to run a lot of monitors, I, you know, I'll welcome all the monitor ports that I can get and the chipset supports it. So eh, why not? It sounds good to me. Head on over to the forums at techsyndicate.com. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out and I'll see you there.